O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, who was a priest, um, priest of the Archdiocese of New Orleans in the 1800s. And as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made your priest, blessed Francis Xavier Silos, outstanding in love, that he might proclaim the mysteries of redemption, and conform those in affli- and comfort those in affliction. Grant by his intercession that we may work zealously for your glory and for the salvation of mankind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day walking, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed through Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, Neither man nor beast nor cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withholding his blazing blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Let Israel wait for the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, 
who can stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving. Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Why is that? Why did Mary choose the better part? It should be a question that we ask ourselves. It's implicit in the gospel today. I remember um, several years ago, <clears throat> I was praying with this gospel, and I was asking, you know, that question. And the first kind of knee-jerk reaction is to think, well, you know, Mary was at prayer, and Martha was serving, right? Martha was, was, was busy doing things while Mary was sitting at prayer. Now, we have to remember in this gospel, both Martha and Mary uh, became saints, right? They became saints. But I asked the Lord, well, Lord, as Mary was sitting at your feet, what were you telling her? I mean, that seems to be the most important thing. Whatever she was receiving, she was sitting at his feet, listening to him speaking, but Luke doesn't tell us what exactly the Lord was telling her. So I asked the Lord in prayer. I said, well, what, are you, what were you telling her? And I, I got very, almost abruptly within my heart, I was telling her how much I loved her. And it just made sense to me at that moment. That's why she had the better part. She was receiving God's love first. She wasn't alone. She was loved. She was lovable. She was worthy right? She had the better part. Now, Martha, on the other hand, again, we often give her a bad rap, but Martha was serving Jesus, right? Which is obviously something that we're called to do. Jesus says, you know, in Matthew chapter 25, what you did for the least of my brethren, you did for me. When you serve those who are least among us, you're not just doing it for these people, you're doing it for, for the Lord. We kind of saw that yesterday, right, in the Good Samaritan story, but what was the problem with Martha? Well, it's implicit again in what she says. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? So the Lord, the Martha was alone in her serving. I remember very clearly, and I probably will say this more often times than not, when Mother Teresa came to this country, of course, Mother Teresa, who has established the missionaries of charity, who served the poorest of the poor, and she had been all over the world. By then, she probably established over 100 different orders, religious convents around the world, different areas. Of course, the poorest of the poor. And again, that's often relative to where you live as far as what exactly is poor. Someone who may be considered poor in this country uh, may be middle class, right, in another country. But she had seen all this poverty, and she came to the United States, and she said that the most impoverished country she'd ever been to was the United States because of the loneliness, because of the loneliness and the lack of community, the lack of love, 
that people showed one another and the isolation that happens amongst people. And this is very true. Have you ever been on a mission trip somewhere to like uh, South America or uh, Africa? There is a great community there. They may not have many of the material um, luxuries that we have and the, and the conveniences we have, um, but they do, and they do have their own suffering, trust me, that's for sure. But they have a sense of community, even in the poorest of the poor. They have a sense of community, that sense of uh, oneness, that sense of connection with one another. Martha was anxious and worried while she was serving because she was by herself. She was without God. She kept her eyes away from Jesus at that moment. That's why she was anxious and worried, and that's why Mary had the better part. But she was with Jesus. Most, most, most importantly, she was receiving his love. And it was from that place, right, that we should do all of our charitable work. Again, I go back to Mother Teresa. She was often asked by uh, reporters, you know, Mother, as you do all your social work and humanity, and she would always stop them. She's like, I'm, we are not social workers. We are not humanitarian, humanitarian workers, whatever it may be. She said, we are brides of Jesus. We are lovers of Jesus. And that's from that place we serve the poorest of the poor. So ask yourself this question. I'm sure if I would ask you to raise your hand, who in here are Marthas? Who in here are Marys? I'm sure most of us would probably say Martha because we live in that kind of culture, which is all about constantly feeling like my worth comes from what I do. And I often hear this a lot from people who may be homebound, right, who can no longer get out and, and do ministry and serve. Uh, they often fall into a kind of, um, a kind of a depression, if you want to say that. Their worth, in their eyes, is not anything because they can't do anything anymore. When, in fact, the Lord says today, no, your worth is not in what you do, but simply in how much I love you, of course, which is unconditional. That's why Mary had the better part, and that's why we're all called to be both Martha and Mary, but to start with Mary, and from Mary, be Martha. And that way we won't fall into being alone when we're serving, nor be anxious and worried about many things. And so may God bless you today, and may God be with you. Amen. Today, as we celebrate Blessed Xavier, Francis Xavier Silas, we ask for his intercession as we turn to our Heavenly Father with our petitions and our prayers. We pray for our church, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for the intentions he has during this month of October. We pray to the Lord. Today, we pray through the intercession of Blessed Xavier Silas, especially for South Louisiana for continued uh, conversion of all Catholics, Christians here. We pray also for the redemptious order as well. We pray to the Lord. the Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those who are missionaries called to serve the poor and to bring the gospel to the poor, as Blessed Xavier Silos did. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and for all young people who may be discerning are open to God's will for their lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those who are sick and those who are homebound, that through the intercession of Blessed Xavier Silos, they may find hope in God's love for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died and for the intention of this Mass and for all the intentions in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, we turn to you this morning and trusting to you these prayers, asking for us to walk in your ways and to receive your grace, your love, your mercy in all we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all souls. Look upon the sacrificial offerings we offer, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord, and so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Given you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Francis Xavier Silos, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will pasture my sheep, and I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith that they, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith by which blessed Francis Xavier Silos never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come on, wait on him. <laughs> 